Hi everyone, my name is Lich Donkey and today we're back on the Python series. Um, today we're going to start work on one of our first options. Um, I'm not entirely sure what we're going to do as our first option, um, but first what I'm going to do is introduce something that we'll be using throughout to make things look a little bit nicer. Um, and I'll, I'll explain it as we go along. So, I've got the lock on. Um, I've also, you may have noticed, swapped to VS Code instead of Atom. It's basically identical. As you can see, it looks pretty much identical. Um, the only difference is that it doesn't have a few bugs, like um, my Atom wasn't working earlier, so I kind of just ditched it. <laughs> but anyway, um, we're going to go over a topic today, uh, importing. So, importing isn't something you would do in GameMaker because everything comes with it. But in Python, you get a few set out um, things you can do, most simple things. Um, and then anything extra you want to do, you need to s import the packages. Um, so I'll, I'll explain to you as we go along which packages you need. Uh, they always go at the top because it's the first thing you need to do. Um, and yeah, that's kind of the gist of it. So probably the most common one I use personally is probably random. Um, you can see if you're using like a uh, auto thing uh, it comes up and tells you and especially if you're using some sort of debug thing like I am um, you can definitely find out whether it's working or not so yeah the one I use most is probably random um, but what we're going to do in this video is go over something which is quite cool I think um, so I remember in the last video these were called like D and H or something so we want this option to print D and for the moment we'll just make this one print H um, now we could just put here print D but if we're having a massive long thing here it would be better to do what we would in game make it do as a script and now obviously to do a script in Python all you do is literally make another file. Um, so we'll, we'll call this one option onepy um, And yeah, there we go. We've made our secondary script. Now in the script, of course, all we want to do is print what was it? D. Um, that's all we want to do in our script. But we can't just call it like we would in Python. Uh, in Python, even in GameMaker, we can't just go option one dot py or something. We can't just do that. That would definitely not work. So what we do is uh, at the top we use import option one. Um, we, we're probably better to actually name this it's easier to name this all one word with no spaces um, whoa. and now we can just go import option one um, now we can see we've got a couple of errors expect this an indent yeah basically we've not put anything here um, if we were just to for the moment just print nothing and if we were to run this you can see that before we've even chose our option it's printed D which is our script now there's ways well there's only one way we really we can get around this and uh, this is kind of a quite a broad thing I'm, I'm just covering quickly um, so it, it is kind of out of order of course this doesn't make much sense to be here but I'm going to go through anyway. Also you may notice that we've not done .py because it automatically assumes that it's .py. It's fairly simple because you can only import Python scripts. Now what we're going to do is define a function within a script. So it's almost like we're making a script inside a script in GameMaker. Um, so if you imagine this is our main script and then we're running another script in the middle of that. That's probably the easiest way to describe it. Um, other languages definitely just have functions like this. So all you do is def standing for define 
then you set the name so in this case we'll call it main and you always have brackets um, just like you're running a function in our script in game maker and there we go we've kind of made our very first function um, we've defined it with the word name um, and now to call this all we do is we just say that little bit there and within this function we're just printing the it's a pretty simple function, it's not going to do much. But now if we were to run this, you can see we just go straight to the menu. So before we just had the print D before the menu, and now it's not there at all. And this is because this hasn't been called yet. So because it's not been called, it means it's just, you know, it's, it's not going to print anything at this point. Until it's called, nothing happens here. So what we're going to do is we're going to call it. We're going to go option one dot main, and it's it's almost as though you're calling from an object, which is the file we've imported, and then dot main. So this is in Game Maker we would have object dot and then a variable. It's kind of like that. And now if we were to run this, and we choose option one. There you go, we printed D. And this is not running from here. This is running from our secondary file. Now of course you may be thinking, you know, what is the point in this? What do we gain from using this? Well it means of course we can have one file that maybe goes to I don't know, like fifty odd lines. Um and it all fits quite nice and neatly on one page. And then we have all the other options in separate files. And this makes everything a lot, lot, lot clearer. Um, and that's the reason why I've added this in right at the start. Because for me, it's something I didn't learn until quite recently. And at that point, I thought, well, I, I wish I'd known that um, before. So I could have made a long script a lot, lot simpler, uh, especially when learning. So that's what we're going to be using for the rest of them. Um, I'm just going to presume now that we've made one that you can make another. So all you would do to make another is also change this to option two, option two, and then just change the name to option two. And it's not rocket science to be honest. Um, if you've got a checking, I don't know what you call it, auto correct thing, um, then of course you can just do this automatically. It'll find the files in your folder. So if you were to make a typo, let's say you put you know, you missed out the T. You can see there, it's got a little underline, and it's not a hard warning, but it's saying it can't find that file. So is it, are you sure that's the one you're looking for? Um, if I was to do this with a file that does exist, for example, what do we have? We have test. You can see there, it is there, and there is no squiggly underline. It said, that's fine, we can import that. So that does make it a lot, lot easier in that sense. Um, I don't think there's anything else really to go over with functions, um, imports, we've gone over quite a lot, and using secondary files. Um, so yeah, if you need to refer to this in the further videos, all I will do in the further videos is have these open. Um, so this will be option two, option three, option four. And this will all be the same. This will be the same. You just change this. So I'm presuming that you kind of understand that. And if not, go back to it and just uh, do it again with a different number. But anyway, uh, that was the second video in the what's it say? third, if you include the first, uh, in the Python series. If you like this video, remember to like, subscribe, or as you guys want to do. And I'll talk to you in the next one.